Hello and welcome to another quick edit video, this time with a classic boardwalk leading into the sunset. And for this long exposure shot, I want to fix the overexposure, bring back some details from the shadows and get some nice sunset colors going. But most importantly, I want to fix those lines, which at the moment aren't straight and that looks really, really weird. So let's start the editing. I'm going to edit the shot in Adobe Photoshop, that means I'm doing the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. By the way, someone mentioned I should change the color space and they are probably right. So I'm clicking on this little text down there and I'm changing the space from Adobe RGB to Pro Photo RGB. And this way I should get a few more colors in this image, hopefully. But now let's head to the optics tab and let's check remove chromatic aberration. I'm not using the profile correction since this will take away some of the dark vignetting and that's what I want, especially for the foreground right here. Right away, I want to fix those lines and that's easily achieved in the geometry tab. Since I want to fix vertical lines, I'm simply adjusting the vertical slider. In this case, I'm increasing it until those lines are straight again, just like that. Of course, now we have a huge gap at the top of the image. In this case, I'm just cropping this part out. And I try to keep the boardwalk nicely centered. And hopefully I don't lose too much of the sky. So this looks good. Good, I guess, maybe some more. I'm going to fix the vignetting later in Photoshop. For now, let's continue with the basic stuff. As I want this image to be very saturated, I'm choosing Adobe Landscape as the profile. You can see this not only makes the shadows a little brighter, but also adds some more base saturation. Then let's adjust the white balance. This shot is a little too warm. I actually want to have some blue tones in here. So I'm going to drop the temperature just a bit, not too much. I think that looks good. I could add a little bit of tint though. All right, now let's fix the overexposure. First, of course, the most obvious thing I could do is to simply drop the exposure. I don't want to overdo it here, so I'm going to only drop it slightly. Next, I also want to drop the highlights. And then I'm increasing the shadows for more details in the darkest parts. Of course, this will result in a lot less contrast. So let's introduce some more contrast again. Okay, I think I'm going to change the rest by using local adjustments. But let's also add some vibrance right away. And in this case, I want to drop the saturation a bit. Since I think it just gives a cool look by increasing the vibrance and dropping the saturation. Just like that. Then let's do the local adjustments and hopefully we get a nicely balanced exposure using a few gradiated filters. I want to start with the sky, so I'm dragging down a gradiated filter just like that. And now let's bring down the exposure a bit. This way we also get some nice details in those clouds. I think that looks pretty cool. Then let's work on the foreground as well. So let's see, I think a gradiated filter like this should work good. Again, I want to slightly bring down the exposure. Not too much. Also, I want this area to be very, very sharp and detailed. For this reason, I'm boosting the texture. And I'm also boosting the clarity a bit. All right. I guess that's it for the gradiated filters. It does look a lot better already. I do want to add some glow effect on the horizon since I just think it looks pretty cool. In this case, I'm using two radial filters. You can see I have already placed them there. With this bigger one, I want to increase the temperature, giving the horizon a little more of a yellowish color cast. 
Also, I can boost the blacks a bit to add a subtle glow here. Okay, now you can see I have a smaller radial filter, which I want to use for a stronger glow effect. So again, I'm boosting the blacks and also I'm dropping the dehaze, which will make the effect even stronger. The only problem is now the highlights start to get a bit too overexposed, so I'm bringing them down again. And that should look pretty good. Okay, then let's do the color grading. And I want to start in the tone curves tab. Here I'm selecting the red channel and by bringing this point to the left, I can introduce some nice red tones to the highlights. And I want to do the same thing in the blue channel. Now I'm skipping the color mixer, I'm heading straight to the color grading. Here I want to boost the highlights further by adding a warm color tone to them. Somewhere in the orange range, I guess. Maybe even yellow. Of course, the saturation is way too high now. So let's bring it down a little. I do want to apply a slightly warm color tone to the midtones as well but with a very, very low saturation. Okay, then for the shadows, I'm going with a cold color tone, which fits nicely against all those warm tones from the highlights and the midtones. Again, let's bring down the saturation a bit, just like that. All right, nice. Then uh, let's head to the details tab and sharpen this image. Now we can finish it in Photoshop. Of course, first I want to get rid of the vignetting, which is caused by the wide angle lens I used. So let's duplicate that layer in case I mess something up. Therefore, I'm just hitting Ctrl J. And now I'm selecting the clone stem tool. Let's zoom in a little bit and make it a little bigger. Now by holding down the Alt key, I can click in this area to copy it just like that. And then I'm moving the brush over the dark part I want to fix. And then I just brush over it. All right, and I'm doing the same thing on the other side, copying an area by holding down the Alt key, and then just drag the mouse to the right and brush over it. And the vignetting is gone. Now I also want to fix those lens reflections on the boardwalk. And here I'm simply using the clone stem tool again. I'm making sure to copy an area nearby just like that. And I place the brush over the part I want to fix. And then I brush over it. Okay, that was easier than expected. I also think I could get rid of those lamp posts because they are kind of distracting to the symmetry of this image. So let's see if I can simply get rid of them using the spot healing brush as well. All right, then next let's add some more glow on the horizon level of this image. So I'm creating a new layer, go with the soft light blending mode. Then by pressing B, I'm picking up the brush tool and I'm dropping the brush opacity to not make this effect too strong. Now I'm holding down the Alt key to pick up a color tone from an area around this place. Or oh, you can see we have a nice warm color tone. Then I'm just starting to paint in some glow. And that's already enough. Now let's merge everything. So I'm selecting those three layers and hit Ctrl E. Finally, I want to check the Nick collection for some nice effects. First, the polarization effect will help to boost those colors some more. So let's increase the strength and play around with the rotate slider. I think this looks pretty good. Now let's add another filter right away. And to boost those sunset colors some more, I'm using the skylight filter. You can see this one is really, really strong. So be very careful here. 
I only want to turn up the strength a little bit. Just like that. All right. And then let's add one more filter. This time I'm going with the Pro Contrast filter. Just to add some more contrast. And that looks pretty good. All right, then let's apply it like this. Okay, and at this point, I want to stop the editing. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video. Mm -hmm.